from Nature Sunshine. They're going to be talking about formulas but not using product names. Uh, and that's just the legal environment that we find ourselves in and so that's why we're going to do it that way. Now it is my honor and distinct pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jay Vandenhavel. Jay, of course, has a tremendous background with Nature Sunshine. He's one of the reasons that Nature Sunshine has done so well for so many years. He is a great teacher. He loves to be with the managers in the field. He also has built a great group up there in the Green Bay area in different parts of the United States up in Wisconsin. And he is an expert at health. Uh, Jay actually has a PhD, I, I believe, in two or three areas and uh, has been very well educated and has helped literally tens of thousands of people with their health. He has tremendous experience. Uh, Jay is a very dear friend and just an honor to be able to introduce him today. Jay, we'll turn the time over to you. All right. Bonjour, Monsieur Lambert. Thank you. <laughs> Lambert, that's, that's French, right? There you go. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your your very busy schedules um, to listen to Beauty and the Beast. Uh, this is something I'm pretty passionate about. Some of you that have heard me lecture in the past, seen me live, have heard me um, talk about sleep more than once. And I think it's one of those areas that you can really help a lot of customers, a lot of friends, a lot of family, as well as yourselves. Uh, this is going to be very lecture heavy, so I don't want to put you to sleep. I need you to stay awake. So if you could be so kind as to pay attention to the best of your ability, turn off your cell phones, grab a pen and a paper. Uh, these slides, again, are going to be recorded, uh, so you can go back and listen to this presentation again or use it in like a, a presentation format in case you miss something. We also have a, a short question and answer uh, when we get through the final slides. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to take over here, Ray, and jump ahead. So the beauty of the beast, right? Let me back up here. There we go. It's jumping around a little bit on me. I apologize for that. This thing's a little faster than I thought. Anyway, the beauty. You know, we talk about Sleeping Beauty. You know the little fairy tale, right? And Sleeping Beauty was beautiful woman. And because probably because she got all that sleep. Sleep is, is a very fascinating topic, and there's a lot of great, new, fantastic information that's coming out as I speak. Uh, I'm on a steady stream and a diet of these types of research documents, and I read a lot of journals as, to, as Dr. Rodier and, and a lot of uh, the other doctors you heard from so far this week. We all try to stay in touch with the latest and the greatest, and then condense it and give it to you so you can use it in your daily business. But Sleeping Beauty, she did look beautiful because she got a lot of sleep, right? And science has now shown us that that quality of sleep really helps repair the body. It repairs muscle, helps us build our bones, improve our pancreas function, insulin function, helps repair the skin. You have beautiful skin, you got to get good sleep. And the part today that you may not be familiar with which I'm going to spend a lot of time on, is what's called detoxing the brain. Detoxing the brain. So a good night's sleep, you know, it's not really a luxury. It's a necessity. And there's a lot of people out there that don't get good sleep. You know, the number one over-the-counter medication sold in America today is Tylenol PM. And I don't think a lot of people are in that much pain. They're more in the pain of sleep debt you know, where they're not getting enough sleep or they don't sleep well. And you can see down here from Mary Carr's Kadun, sleep deprivation comes with consequences that are scary, really scary. So we're going to talk a little, about, uh, a little bit about sleep. And before we get into this slide, I just want to give you a few notes. Sleep is equal to one-third of your life. So one-third of your entire life is spent in sleep. And just like we concentrate on good air and good water and good food and good exercise and good prayer, meditation, yoga, all the different things that we do to balance ourselves, quality sleep is something that we need to focus on and help every single client that comes into your practice, your store, or you're just talking to in the general public. Quality of sleep is what we're talking about, quality of sleep. 
It's critical for cognitive function. In other words, we can't think if we don't get a good quality sleep, especially in the elderly. So here it says the old school of thought was we're just kind of powering down when we sleep, kind of like a computer. We kind of go idle. We just put your computer in sleep mode. You know what that's like. But new science has shown us, in fact, that our brains actually start working when we fall asleep. It goes into different rhythms, different waves, which is very different than what happens when we're awake and focused and running around and doing our lives. Neurons or nerve cells, they kick in and they flood the brain, brain with what's called a hypnotic flow. There's like a pulse that's going through the brain and it changes the chemistry and everything that's happening in that brain. It's really fascinating. Basically, sleep clears the mind. And it processes data from everything we've done in a day and runs what we call backup checks. The interesting part is that the brain is about 2% of your body mass, but yet it uses a quarter of all the energy that you create in a day from calories and cellular function. So 2% of the mass using a quarter of all the energy. So you can see here that we've got to start looking at this in a different way as to what is really happening to our bodies. Now sleep is the time for what we call checks and balances. Hormones, enzymes, protein levels. The brain, when we're asleep, is actually working again. It's working and it's looking at all this different thing. It's taking inventory and also it starts cleaning there are molecules that come into the brain and sweep out toxic debris. You may have heard the word free radicals. This comes from oxidation or aging, and also molecules that are no longer working appropriately. So the brain's starting to do a lot of different things when we're sleeping than what we thought. It's kind of nature's panacea. It's, it's more powerful than any drug or chemical to restore and rejuvenate the brain. So it's doing it all on its own. Not just the brain, the body too. As I showed you in the last slide, we're building muscles and bone. The interesting part is the brain cannot detox like a liver or a kidney does. You know, we have organs in our body and a lot of us listening to this webinar know the importance of cleansing to help the colon and the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys. The brain uses sleep along with something called cerebral spinal fluid to detoxify itself and renew itself with nutrients and oxygen. It does that with blood flow. So basically, sleep is the only time the brain can catch its breath. Now that cerebral spinal fluid that I talked about kind of bays that whole brain and blood vessels. Now, Dr. Nettergaard at the University of Rochester, he kind of looks at it this way. He says the whole body uses energy in the day and the body gets rid of garbage by the liver, kidneys, and the lymph. I just talked about that. But again, the brain really doesn't have that kind of function. So what she found is that glial cells, these are certain specialized cells inside of our brain, tend to pump. They tend to pump things in and they pump things out. So we have cerebral spinal fluid kind of bathing the brain, the blood vessels, and these glial cells are pumping things in and out. So in the daytime, they're kind of idle. They don't do a lot. But when we get to sleep, they become very active. And the brain actually shrinks while we're sleeping. And the reason for that is because then you have more room for the spinal fluid to wash out the debris, kind of like a dishwasher. Didn't know your brain was a dishwasher when you were sleeping, did you? Hopefully that's keeping you awake. So that cerebral spinal fluid kind of goes in and out of blood and it surrounds the outside of all the blood vessels in the brain, the spinal cord. Another analogy I often use is like ditches next to a road. You know, they carry away water. Here they're carrying nutrients in and out and debris in and out. And that only happens when we sleep, not when we're awake. So uh, sometimes maybe a quick nap is not such a bad thing, right? So the what? Well, if we don't get enough sleep, the glial cells can't get rid of the garbage and it starts to pile up inside the brain. And this can lead to a whole host of neurodegenerative disorders, right? Sleep equals no detox. So a lot of you listening are experts in detoxification. 
thinking about things about, as I mentioned, liver, gallbladder, kidneys, the lymph. But how do we detox the brain? Well, you can't really do that. The brain has to do that itself. And we can't do that unless we have quality sleep. It's a fantastic subject and it really gets you to think different. So what are the benefits of good quality sleep? Well, of course, you're going to concentrate better. You're going to have better planning, better memory. Nobody wants to lose their memory. Also, burn fat and be fit. So this is great information uh, for weight loss and, and, and weight loss guidelines. And you'll see here from Brown University. It lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes, helps with depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis, and even cancers. So it really behooves everyone to look at what's happening with their sleep cycles and to understand, am I getting a good quality sleep? So just want to, you might want to jot this down. Bottom line, quality sleep is uninterrupted. I'd make a note of that. Uninterrupted. So what that really means is when you can get yourself to sleep and you kind of pass out, brain shrinks, goes into detox mode and nutrient replenishment mode, and the glial cells are activated, things are pumping in and out, it's not going to be a good thing if you're tossing and turning. It's not going to be a good thing if you're laying there for three hours. You're not getting anything done. So uninterrupted is quietly passing out and maybe not really being aware of your surroundings until you wake up in the AM. So that's what we want, uninterrupted. Keep that in mind as we go through this. So the benefits are many. Uh, sleep is very therapeutic. But to be beautiful, right? It only works if we get enough of that quality sleep. That's very fascinating. When I was in medicine back in the 80s, and I'm dating myself, early 80s, you know, most books I read, seven and a half you know, to eight hours was a good quality sleep. Now, the research I'm looking at today, as late as 2014, even goes as high as nine and a half hours. When's the last time you had nine and a half hours? I mean, that's pretty rare. So we're kind of looking at this differently now and saying we actually need more than what we think, like eight to nine would be a better uh, time frame. So if you're one of these people that's living on five hours, six hours, seven hours, and you're like, yeah, but that's good for me, uh, it's fine for me, um, I could tell you scientifically it's not so good for your brain. So you may want to expand those hours, okay? No pharmaceutical is capable of these types of benefits. Only our bodies and brains can do this. Roughly 70 million Americans every night do not get a good night's rest. And that's according to the Center of Disease Control. And it's interesting that the CDC now considers insufficient sleep an epidemic. You know, you're all watching the news and seeing problems with the big E, right? Well, this is something that gets very little fanfare. And that's why I'm excited uh, to present this webinar, because we're talking about 70 million Americans. And every one of us, at one time or another, is affected by insufficient sleep. So how do we know? Well. If we're not going to get this quality sleep, even as high as nine hours, uh, we can start statistically tracking what's happening here. And what we're finding out is the beast, is beauty is sleep, makes our skin look beautiful, remember that. Our bodies, our brains detox. But the beast is nearly 40% of adults not off during the day in the past month. Well, you don't want people nodding off when they're behind a car or driving a bus or an airplane. Right? I mean, that'd be dangerous. But that's almost half that we're nodding off. So what does that tell you? Well, maybe we're not getting the sleep we really need, or maybe we need a nap. 5% have done so during driving. This doubles the chance of calling in sick if you don't get good sleep. It doubles the chance of calling in sick. So working with corporations or you're a wellness specialist, this is a statistic you need to share with people that your sick calls from your employees are going to double if they don't get adequate rest. 45% of teenagers don't get the nine hours needed. Yes, teenagers need nine to nine and a half. That's pretty much a fact now. The teenage brain is completely wired differently, and anybody that has a teenager will agree with me, is completely wired differently than the adult brain. And therefore, it's different active 
and it has different needs, so they actually need a little more sleep than most adolescents. And 25% of teens not off in class. Well, they're not learning, are they? So you can see this is presenting a lot of problems coming from the National Sleep Foundation. The American Academy of Pediatrics uh, just endorsed later school starts. You saw that all in the news prior to September. Um, is that they want later school starts so kids get longer sleep because of these statistics. And most teens that I talk to in my practice use the extra hour to play games. So you've got to pay attention. There's got to be a certain time you go to bed and a certain time you wake up, and you've got to train your brain to do these kinds of things. It's very important, or you can have all of these neurological dysfunction, even in teenage years. And bad sleep rears its ugly head. It's from Dr. Veasley, leading researcher at University of Pennsylvania. He said, brain cells get overworked like double shift employees. If no good sleep, uh, they collapse. These brain cells actually get overworked and underpaid and basically collapse. They're so exhausted they can't get done what they need to do. So during sleep, the brain uses antioxidants. Make a note of that. During sleep, the brain uses antioxidants. You all know what those are. And those are necessary to mop up daily work. So you've got to look at the diet too, right? If there's a lot of junk food and sodas and energy drinks coming into the brain, coffees and teas, and there's not really any good antioxidants, which we get from fruits and vegetables, the cells die off. Sad part, permanently. They're toast. You don't want that because then the brain can age faster than you are. That organ can actually get older than what your chronological age is. Uh, so metabolically, it's in trouble. Kind of interesting, and I just want to go on a side note here for a minute, so bear with me and don't fall asleep. It's, it's kind of suggested in some thesis circles, and I spend a lot of time in thesis circles. And for those of you who don't know, a thesis is basically taking a hypothesis and trying to prove it. They're looking at something called amyloid beta. Amyloid beta. Now, you may have heard the word amyloid before, um, particularly in relation to Alzheimer's disease. You know, it's the main component of amyloid plaques is amyloid beta. And it's always found elevated in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. Okay, so this is something that a lot of health circles and medical theses are looking at and trying to make breakthroughs. We know that amyloid beta is made throughout the waking day. So when we're awake and you're listening to this webinar, uh, your brain is making something called amyloid beta. Um, and it does serve some functions. But at night, you have to clear that up. You have to take this protein, you have to split it apart, and the brain does that with glial cells, pumps it into cerebral spinal fluid, cerebral spinal fluid pumps it into the blood, and you get rid of it. But that only happens when you sleep. So as we see this research, as we see this very important information, we start making connections. So it's not just all a bunch of lecture. It has a lot of therapeutic value. There's one thing I like to tell my customers. Your cell phone has an off button. I mean, I'll never forget the time I came into my teenage daughter's bedroom. It was 2 in the morning. She was about 16, and she was sleeping under a blanket, and I just stuck my head in. It was about 2 in the morning. That's when I was going to bed bad idea, right? I should listen to my own words, but back then I didn't know what I know now. Just check in on my daughter, right? So I open a door, and she's underneath the blankets, and I can see a light coming up from underneath the blanket. So I lift the blanket back, and I just kind of peek to see what she's doing, and she's sound asleep, but her fingers are texting. Her eyes are closed. I called her out by name. She did not respond, and she actually finished the text and the phone fell out of her hands and she went back into sleep and I don't think she ever came out of it. Um, I learned to teach my daughters right after that. It's called a button. So they can actually do this in their sleep. That's scary stuff. Now, University of California, Los Angeles, Dr. Liu, um, he said sleep restriction is, is stress. You know, so if we're not getting adequate sleep, deep sleep, quality sleep, it's stressing the entire body. Some of you know about cortisol. It's a hormone made by the adrenal glands that creates a lot of belly fat. So you see how sleep is weight loss and not only stress,
but the stress on the brain, the stress on the body. So stop checking the phone. Artificial light is a stimulus. It will keep the brain active. Remember, you want that brain to go into a different phase when you sleep. Keep the screens out of your face, especially at night. You, don't, you shouldn't be watching TV before you go to bed. I mean, a TV in your bedroom is a bad idea. So is an iPod and a phone and everything else. Uh, the bedroom should be technology free other than maybe uh, an alarm clock because it, it disrupts what's called our internal clocks or another word I don't have here called circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm. Kind of like the, the change of seasons. Change of seasons, our circadian rhythm or internal clock is watching the amount of light going in and out uh, from sun up to sundown and we have hormonal changes that help us balance to that. It's how the animals uh, know what's going on. It's how the plants know what's going on. Uh, it's time for sleep. So there's a lot going on here that we've got to do to help that brain power down at the end of the night. Let's talk about some common sense issues here. Sleeping pills are not the answer. I already told you what the number one over-the-counter medication is because it only targets one area of the brain. And you cannot replicate the natural order of sleep. This from Dr. Collip. Ideal is to train your body and your brain for about eight to nine hours every single night. So that means you kind of got to go to, to bed at the same time and try to train yourself up to get up at the same time. So what about catch up? What about, well, I'm on a shift work and I'm doing this and I've been stressed and I've had all these things. I had to stay up. I had to do this. And then we think, well, I'll just get some catch up sleep. The science has proven it's not as good as consistent sleep time. So this is something that we have to work into our discussions from a natural health perspective with all people, is we've got to help them understand uh, this training of the brain and getting the same type of sleep. A more exposure to natural light is okay. Uh, keep away the artificial. Reduce secondhand smoke, air pollution, toxic water, do cleanses throughout the body more often, exercise, and of course, using antioxidants. Supplementation is very critical to what we're doing with making sure our brains stay in tip-top shape. So let's talk about nutrients a little bit. You know, what nutrients do we require to sleep to be just right? Let's talk a little bit first about the capacity of that brain. All of our brains have about a million gigabytes. That's a lot of information storage space, and it takes a lot of energy. And when you use a lot of energy at the cellular level, and you have this huge capacity to take all this information and disseminate it, th something happens called oxidation. Or you oxidize, or a better word to remember is age. So we don't want aging brains, right? So there are things that the body requires from the diet or supplementation to come into the body that can fix this. So here's a lot of big words and I'll try to help you with that uh, later on, but amino acids like taurine and theanine, glutamine, these are very important amino acids. Uh, we tend to get those uh, from our diet, but sometimes we don't have a very good diet and we don't always get the amino acids we require. So supplementation can be helpful here. One thing about amino acids, when you take them as a supplement, um, they should be taken on an empty stomach, usually before bed. Minerals like magnesium, which is a relaxer, zinc, uh, I don't use a lot of minerals, uh, but they are very helpful for balancing the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Or the hormone melatonin. I just want to stop there for a second because I just want to briefly discuss uh, melatonin. You know, a couple slides ago we were talking about uh, the big A or Alzheimer's. And, um, you know, there's a lot of indication that supplementation may be effective against these amyloid betas. Not necessarily uh, a lot of good indication and science coming out. And one of them is, is melatonin. Um, there's a connection with melatonin that basically helps us regulate our sleep. So as we go through the change of seasons, some circles call it sundowning, but basically when that's happening, uh, the pineal gland, the little gland inside your head, 
kind of notices there's less light or more light. It kind of tells you what the season is. And hormone is released from that gland called melatonin, which regulates our sleep. So I want to mention this, and it's not on the slide before I go for, further, but in 2009, uh, I read a report out of Science Magazine, and basically it was talking about amyloid beta production. And of course, it follows this circadian rhythm, this circadian rhythm that we talked about. Now, it kind of rises when you're awake, and it falls off during sleep. Um, is amyloid beta production. Remember I said as you listen to this webinar, you're making amyloid beta, beta proteins, but as you sleep, you clear that up. So, you know, the awake part, we have different uh, nerve proteins like amyloid beta and something called orexin. You don't need to know that, but uh, these were shown to be necessary for our circadian rhythm and this amyloid beta production. And basically, what does all this mean? The report suggested that sleep debt can cause chronic buildup of amyloid beta, which hypothetically leads to the big A. And this is very consistent with recent findings that sleep deprivation is associated with early onset of Alzheimer's. So there's science coming out. Now, it's not definitive science, but there's a lot pointing at, yep, this makes a lot of sense. So sometimes this hormone uh, can be very important because there can be a link between poor sleep quality and the release of this hormone. Even in the International Journal of Molecular Science in 2013, they talked about melatonin and a link with poor sleep quality. You know, Alzheimer's disease is the most expensive condition in the nation. There is no other disease that costs more money than this, and this is 2014 uh, statistic. It costs our nation $214 billion for Alzheimer's uh, disease. Um, and it should shock you that that's the most expensive condition when we think about other things like heart disease and cancers. Uh, so as we age and the baby boomers and the millennials are coming up, uh, we've got to start paying attention that, hey, maybe one of the components that we need to start teaching people is about quality sleep and helping them get to that level. We know, and, and bear with me, don't fall asleep now, this is important stuff. We know that melatonin is involved in that circadian rhythm. So sometimes we're working shift work, you know, we're not getting a good rest schedule as we've already noted. And so um, with the change in the seasons, uh, we're not getting what we need. So now is a good time to be thinking about using something like that. Because we know that Alzheimer's people have amyloid plaques and they show up in parts of our brains like the hypothalamus, and um, they cause a lot, of, a lot of problems with memory and concentration. So this whole phenomenon is directly and indirectly related uh, to what's happening with our amyloid beta throughout the day. So sometimes this can be a very powerful supplement, especially in the change of seasons. Or if you travel a lot, I travel a lot, I know Ray travels a lot, and a lot of times when we wake up in the hotel room and I'm like, where am I, what day is it, what time is it? Uh, that's all regulated by the hormones, melatonin. So that whole circadian rhythm gets thrown off. And then we've got you know, amino acids like GABA and B vitamins, antioxidants. Now you've heard of alpha lipoic acid and lycopenes. So these types of supplements are very critical uh, to helping that oxidation of the brain and are just some of the crucial regulatory sleep nutrients that we look for when we're trying to help people with these busy brains. Now, some can't get sleep well due to the brain keeping busy and stimulated. It won't turn off and shut down. You ever had that? You're trying to sleep and, you're, and your brain's going and you're balancing your checkbook and you're telling yourself, i got to hurry up and get some sleep. i got to get this in. Um, well, you know, if we look at um, the butyric acid, gamma amino, it helps quiet down the firing during the day, supports that nervous system function. So GABA a lot of times is, is something that uh, we can use um, when we can't turn off the brain. The brain just keeps talking and, and it keeps going. Or look at the herb Skeletium tortuosum. Uh, those of you that are... Uh, kind of new with Nature Sunshine, you may want to take that particular herb and Google it, or you may want to put it in the uh, website and search it. But Skeletium tortuosum helps quiet anxiety or anxiousness. So we have GABA and we have the Skeletium. 
magnesium, also a very powerful relaxer, as well as the amino acid L-taurine. All of these are very important for helping that brain just turn off. It's, just, it's so busy, it doesn't know how to power down. You're having a hard time with relaxation techniques. This is where we would want to bring those things in and recommend those to customers. Our brain often feels tired, and if the brain is tired, it's fried. We get very poor alertness. That's because there's garbage up there, and it needs to be removed. You've got to repair tissues. Remember, sleep does that. There's also something called a phospholipid, which is called the phosphatidylserine, big word. Remember, it's a phospholipid, meaning fat-loving phosphate. It may reduce cognitive dysfunction. So in other words, if we're having a hard time with concentration and focus, um, this particular phospholipid, uh, as well as some antioxidants like lycopene or alpha-lipoic acid, are very helpful to the brain because at night when you get some sleep, they're being passed into the cerebral spinal fluid, which is passed off to the blood supply, which is bathing all the glial cells and all those little pumps that we talked about in the very beginning. Also, there's a herb called Chinese club moss, known as superzine A, another one that's been proven to be beneficial to the brain and basically helping repair and remove garbage. So I use these phospholipids and Chinese club moss in a situation where people are very behind on sleep. And there's a lot of people that'll come in to your offices and say things like, I just can't focus, I just can't concentrate. And then I'll start talking to them about their sleep patterns and, and say, how many hours do you think is adequate? And then you start asking, but are you uninterrupted sleep? And that's usually where you find the problem. Yeah, I fall asleep for two hours, and I wake up, then I read a book, then I fall asleep for an hour, and then my eyes on the clock, and then I get up. Well, you're behind on sleep, and that's why you can't think. You got too much garbage upstairs, and need some help getting rid of it. These are the types of supplements you want to use for that. So very, very powerful. Natural light produces a stimulus of hormone release from the brain. We talked about that. Less light produces different levels of that hormone, melatonin. So that's one we already touched on. I gave you some juicy information on that. Artificial light is a stimulus at night. It'll keep you awake. We talked about that. You've got to keep those iPads and those cell phones and those TVs off. Now, our evolutionary brain kind of gets tricked into off levels of this season-changing hormone, resulting in mood disorders and poor sleep. So again, the brain's trying to watch what's happening with natural daylight, if there's less or more but it gets tricked because you've got all this stimulus coming at it, you know, staring at computers and all these different things. Um, it's good that it's noon right now. We're not doing this webinar at 10 o'clock at p.m., right? So we get tricked, and that really messes with releasing those hormones. So again, uh, something like melatonin for change of seasons shift work. And keep in mind that uh, melatonin kind of falls off as we age, so we don't produce the levels we did when we were younger. So there's a lot of older people that don't sleep well, and of course that's going to affect their memory and their concentration. So the big purpose of this slide is just saying we've got to keep that artificial light to a minimum. And moods, of course, are a big one. Moody behavior, gaining weight, remember we talked about stress and being like a cortisol. Restless sleep can all be signs of imbalance with sleep regulation. So a lot of times... Um, you know, maybe we're not asking the right questions when we're trying to help somebody uh, with their natural health quest. You know, if they're having a lot of moody behaviors, you know, we may be thinking, oh, we need to do a liver cleanse. Uh, uh, maybe we need some Chinese herbs to help with this, whatever. Uh, but don't forget to ask the sleep questions. That could be the whole reason they're having this moody behavior. It could be the whole reason why they're gaining weight. Now, 5-hydroxytryptophan, big word abbreviated as 5-HTP, is a precursor to serotonin. I like this best before sleep. This is something that can be taken before sleep. Kind of like eating a big turkey dinner. You get a lot of tryptophan from turkey. And it does tend to make the brain a little sleepy, and you want to take a nap. So you see that at Thanksgiving, right? You eat a lot of turkey, and everybody sleeps on the couch. Well, you know, that's actually a good thing. So... Zinc and, and B6 also help the nervous system for regulation. So I would be thinking about 5-hydroxytryptophan uh, before sleep and to help get a good night's 
sound sleep. And that can also parlay into mood. So kind of in conclusion here, you know, sleep can be the beauty or it can be the beast. If you want to look good, feel good, you want beautiful skin, you want a beautiful looking body, you got to get some quality uninterrupted sleep. How many hours? Eight to nine and a half. If you're interrupting the sleep, you're working shift work, you're having difficulty sleeping every night, it's the beast. Your brain is taking a beating. It can't repair, it can't detox. And new science shows that the brain is busy and it detoxifies during that sleep as, as we were talking about. Again, nine hours is a new normal. And we've got to reduce this exposure to art of light. We've got to tell ourselves after eight o'clock the technology needs to be powered down and turned off. And try to go to bed at the same time every night and try to wake up about the same time every night. Do your best. Doesn't mean that you can't have an occasional bad night. You just don't want consistent ones because that brain is going to take a beating. There's one scientific study I read just this week. It said that if you deprive somebody of sleep for three days, they could possibly go insane. If you deprived them of sleep for seven days, they would die. That's how important it is to understanding. We've got to help our brains, and sleep is the only thing that's going to do that. So supplements can come in here, the ones that we talked about. We talked about GABA. We talked about Skeletium tortuosum. We talked about melatonin. We talked about the phospholipids. We talked about 5-HTP, and again, melatonin. Um, these are all very helpful with getting the brain back on track, along with proper diet and exercise and rest. So with that in mind, uh, hopefully you didn't fall asleep on me. It was a lot of information. And again, you can go back and listen to this recording. This will also be a rerun tonight live. So I'm going to bring back uh, Mr. Lambert, and uh, we'll take it from there. And we're going to do a little bit of questions and answers. So if you want, you can just type in your, your questions down at the bottom of the box, and, and Ray will sift through those. Mr. Lambert, are you awake? I am right here, buddy. You did an awesome job. I sure appreciate Whew. the great presentation. A lot, um, lot of lecture, but I tell you, it's, it's juicy stuff. Oh, my heavens. I, I am so impressed. Um, one question that came in. How You talked about skin uh, and, and so on. Could you bring more information up, it says, on how to become younger as a result of getting this consistent, steady sleep on a regular basis? Well, we talked about that in the beginning, but sleep works on the body restoratively. So right. when, when we're building bone, we need sleep. You know, it would be kind of like if you had a fracture. You need rest. We know that all the skin cells, when we're asleep, are getting a lot more nutrients than normal, so we're making new skin underneath the old, and then we slough off the old, and what comes up is better skin, better hydrated skin, better essential fatty acid mass. Also, the muscles are repairing when we sleep, and that's just the physical body. The biggest thing I wanted to get through to people today is that, yeah, that's where beauty comes from. It isn't something that you cosmetically put on your face as much as it is coming from the inside out, and that only happens with sleep. But the biggest thing is that brain. We've got, you know, nobody wants to lose their brain. It's the most important organ you got, right? Uh, God forbid something would happen to you physically and become disabled, but if you lose your mind, you lose everything. So we're talking about how we can have younger brains, brains that can tend to prevent disease. And as a lot of us age, we're, you know, this population aging, we're learning more and more and more that um, things like Alzheimer's and, and a lot of other neuro degenerative diseases and depression, anxiety, and moody behavior, uh, is we're starting to find out that a lot of this is going back to people are just not getting adequate sleep. So we physically age faster and our brains age faster if we're not getting quality uninterrupted sleep. Um, I kind of hope that answers the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. <coughs> you did a great okay. job. Everything that's good for the brain is good for the body. And um, Absolutely. So Basically, getting sleep makes a huge difference for your body to repair. You look much younger. Everything works better when you're getting adequate amounts of sleep. So I right. think that's outstanding. Yeah, and it's just as simple as the little fairy tale of the beauty and the beast, right? Beauty sleep, got to get my beauty sleep, they used to say all the time, is actually, <laughs> we're finding out, 
truer than you know. I agree. I have a fascinating question here from Randy. He says, do 65-year-olds um, have to go, that have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, is there a way to not be awakened? <laughs> That's a good question. It is. Yeah, well, we're talking about different things here. Um, you know, if we're talking about males, uh, yes, we are. then we probably start talking about things like the prostate. And, you know, there we've got a whole different issue where that has to be addressed. That would not necessarily go into what we talked about today. It would be understanding that there's a reason they're getting up two or three times a night. And if they're doing that, as I already said, as we age, we have declining levels of melatonin, which is uh, very important uh, in fighting, our, you know, fighting off cognitive uh, dysfunction. So you got to catch 22 there. They're trying to get a good night's sleep, but the need to get up and use the restroom uh, wakes them out of that deep sleep, so they lose the benefit of the sleep by getting up two, three times a night. So in those situations in a male, uh, you know, find out either through their physicians or whatever, if there's a prostate issue, that has to be addressed. And I know, Ray, that you have products for that. Point being is that in women, there may be the same type of issues, but here there's not so much a prostate involved as there may be bladder issues. Um, and unfortunately, and again, uh, I'm trying to answer this question without trying to think about every possible diagnosis or disease that affects us. So we're talking generality. With women is, uh, you know, the natural act of childbirth can be very difficult on the lower portion of the body, and it tends to stretch and pull things. And so sometimes older women, and since we're talking about 65-year-olds, tend to have, you know, incontinence. They tend to have bladder issues. Um, that's going to wake them up too. So again, those need to be dressed uh, more mechanically. Um, there are herbs and supplements that can be taken to help strengthen that. I also recommend Kegels. Uh, to these women, I tell them to do a hundred a day. Uh, so, for the women listeners, you know what Kegels are, and if men don't, talk to a woman, and they'll tell you, because men can do it too. It does benefit prostate, so you need to tighten things up downstairs. Otherwise, you're going to have that issue. So, uh, the question really is just kind of solidifying what we've been saying: is that this is not helping their memory and their concentration and their focus. They're getting up two, three, four times a night. So that has to be addressed. It isn't that they can't get asleep or stay asleep. The body's waking them up because it's got a different issue. Make sense? Yes, sir. Perfect sense. Okay. I have some fascinating questions coming in. Um, I, I've never seen so many questions after a webinar. This has really struck a chord here, Jay. This is awesome. Hallelujah. Um, That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I just want to mention last night, uh, the last two days we've been doing inform intro meetings here at Nature Sunshine for the employees. I was in charge of those, and I was getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning the last two days because we launched these meetings at 6.30 in the morning and went until late yesterday and the day before. And the thing that happened uh, last night, I was beyond exhausted. And so I, I chugged a whole bunch of um, some great products that Nature Sunshine have, and I also took some uh, vitamin C ascorbates, made this great antioxidant drink, and went to bed and felt tons better this morning. And it went perfectly with what you're talking about. Um, it, it is just amazing what antioxidants do to rebuild your brain and help rebuild your vitality and energy. It's phenomenal. Right. I think um, you know, part of the very important information in here that I think a lot of the people listening will agree with is you never thought about detoxifying the brain before. And, you know, again, we don't have a kidney, a liver, you know, we don't have this colon upstairs. So it's its own separate encased entity. And the cerebral spinal fluid, which surrounds your blood vessels, and I apologize, I should have put in a graphic for that so you could visualize that. But again, think of ditches next to a road basically carrying this fluid which can take out the garbage and then the antioxidants can rush in to replenish. But if we're not getting a good night's sleep, that's not happening. So you got a double-edged sword again. If you're not getting a good diet, good supplementation with antioxidants, 
that brain is really behind the eight ball uh, because it didn't have a chance to clean house and it didn't have the nutrients it needed to finish the job and do repair. And as we saw in that one statistic, once those cells die, they don't come back. So uh, that should wake you up. Very, very good. Uh, two more questions and we'll call it good. This is from a Abby Adams and she says, what about a teenager who sleeps 12 hours and still won't wake up? <laughs> tired all the time. Okay. Says she's tired all the time, even wakes up um, when and, and is even sleepy after that. Uh, mood is angry, gets out of control after several days, depression is developing. Any suggestions for a teenager like that? Yeah, I can, I can revert back to some of the science that has actually touched on that. Um, again, I think, just my opinion, since we're just having a, a general Q&A, is that it isn't just sleep in this issue. However, is that sleep quality sleep? That would be the question to find out with that individual. They may sleep for 12 hours, but I don't know if they're getting deep quality sleep. So when you start looking at that kind of science, what we found out is this. The brain actually goes through three different levels in about nine hours of what's called REM sleep or rapid eye movement. So what happens is when you fall asleep, you kind of go into this la-la land then you kind of come out of it and the first time you come out is the first cycle of REM and at that point you're dreaming then you fall back down deeper you detox you repair then you come up for round two and you do this three times so in actuality every has three different dreams every single night Wow! so, so the question becomes this how many people can remember all three dreams? There you go. Okay, so there that might help the questioner to say, well, what kind of dreams is this teenager having, if any? Can they remember any? If they are, then that, that is a good thing. Then, I, you know, if they can't remember any and they're sleeping 12 hours, they're not getting deep and up and deep and up like the brain should be working, there's a problem there. So I'd start looking at things like the diet, I would start looking at the artificial light, stimulus, all these other things we talked about too. So that might help answer the question is, are they dreaming? And if not, a lot of people will notice that when they start getting better quality sleep, they start remembering more than one dream. They'll remember two, sometimes three, or they'll go from black and white to color. Or they'll go from a basic dream to something very vivid not nightmares, we don't want to do that, but you kind of get the idea that your dreams can also be a gauge of how much repair and detox is really happening. So try to pay attention, are you having three dreams a night? So, um, you know, and I know there's a, a product from Nature Sunshine that can be used to help with that too. That was uh, done by Dr. Lou. Yeah. The, the magnesium L3 on eight. Yeah. Magnesium L3N8, I know. Magnesium L3N8 sometimes can be taken throughout the day and sometimes taken before bed because the brain, as you saw in my presentation, you, likes magnesium. It's a relaxer. Magnesium L3N8, which is like piggyback to vitamin C, is very potent at getting into the brain and opening up the channels. So a lot of times people will take those products and they have very vivid dreams and they never had that before. It almost kind of scares them a little bit. And I'm like, well, it's working. Uh, it's a powerful antioxidant and free quenter. So, you know, there's there's other things to look at in this situation. There's not enough information for me to say this is the problem, but my recommendation is find out if the kid is dreaming. And if they can't remember any dreams, you're not getting quality sleep, and that will lead to mood behavior and longer sleep patterns that are not getting the job done. Very good. Um, this is coming in from Diane Toombs in New York. 86-year-old female takes GABA and herbal sleep at 6 p.m. at night and still can't sleep. Has tried melatonin in the past. She's a widow. Any other ideas? Okay. We talked about GABA as one of those recommendations for turning off the brain. Herbal sleep, I think, is hops, valerian, and passion flower. Those are nervines, and they may or may not be helping. But we did talk about uh, magnesium, and we talked about skeletium tortuosum. I would recommend going to the skeletium and try this uh, in place, or adding two, 
what you're doing. Also, the 5-hydroxytryptophan is another one that you can try. So I, I don't think you're out of options here. I think you need to change the program. But one of the things I usually ask the elderly is what medications are you on and how many? And then look up the side effects. And many, many times the side effects are poor sleep. Got it. Okay, last question of the day. This is from Jay Thorpe, and this is fascinating. He asks, would taking supplements to repair and lengthen one's telomeres, for example, astragalus, cat's claw, etc., help to counter the effects of age-related brain chemistry and the physiological degeneration of the brain? Or I love I love that question because I'm into something called epigenomics uh, and genomics in general, and what he's talking about with telomeres is telomeres are similar to like a shoelace. You know how on the end of our shoelace we have a little plastic coating to keep uh, the lace from frilling or fraying? Uh, with age, with oxidation, with stress, we actually start losing the end of that shoelace and once that is gone, uh, the genes are pretty much toast. Uh, the proteins are denatured um, and we're ending uh, our life. So it's a very fascinating question. In a simple word, in my opinion, yes. Okay. Yes. I, I love that. <laughs> I would okay. be taking, I take antioxidants, I will for life. Yep. And, because and I, I do believe that they are very good, and there are other uh, nutrients or ingredients supplementation that do have been clinically shown to extend the life of the telomere. So anything that we do good, good water, good air, good food, good supplementation, of course that's going to help extend the life of the telomere, which helps extend the life of you, period. 